Hello, amazing people! I'm Jessa Marie Hibo and welcome to my channel. Today, I will share to you my chosen encyclical, which is Passim in Terrace, which means Peace on Earth. It is a papal encyclical issued by Pope John XXIII on April 11, 1963. Did you know that Pope John XXIII or Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli was born on November 25, 1881? He was ordained a priest in 1904 and served in various posts including appointment as papal nuncio in several countries such as France in 1944. Pope Pius XII made Roncalli a cardinal in 1953, and then he was elected as Pope on October 28, 1958. He headed the Catholic Church and ruled the Vatican City from 1958 until his death on June 3, 1963. He was known as the Pope who changed the entire image of the Catholic Church in the eyes of the world. He was a Pope with a vision, and that vision was to propel him onto the world stage as he called for a Vatican Council to bring the Catholic Church up to date with the modern world. What is Passim in Terrace all about? It is an encyclical on establishing universal peace in truth, justice, charity and liberty this was the first encyclical that the pope addressed not just to the catholics but also to all people of goodwill and espouses issues of peace and warns the danger of solving conflict through violence this explains that conflicts should not be resolved by recourse to arms but rather negotiations he clearly establishes that every man has the right to life, to bodily integrity, and to the means which are suitable for the proper development of life. When Pope John XXIII issued Passion in Terrace, the Second Vatican Council was still in progress. The Pope reacted to political situation in the middle of the Cold War the erection of the Berlin Wall in 1961, and a growing threat of nuclear war. In fact, Passim in Terrace was a response to the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 in which the world narrowly avoided a nuclear war but it frightened millions as nuclear weapons began to proliferate. It was signed by him a month before he died. It was his legacy to the Second Vatican Council. The document is divided into four sections. The first section of the encyclical establishes the relationship between individuals and humankind, encompassing the issues of human rights and moral duties. The second section addresses the relationship between man and state, dwelling on the collective authority of the latter. The third section establishes the need for equality amongst nations and the need for the state to be subject to rights and duties that the individual must abide by. The final section presents the need for greater relations between nations, thus resulting in collective states assisting other states. The encyclical ends with the urging of Catholics to assist them, Christians, and non-Catholics in political and social aspects. The main point here is that it focuses on human rights as basis for peace, which ensured through social rights and responsibilities between people, between citizens and public authorities, between states and among nations. It calls for this armament. The state's need for worldwide institution to promote and safeguard universal common good. The new world order to be built on four pillars, truth, justice, love, and freedom. Its contribution to social concerns. This encyclical set out the guidelines for all the people to live in peace. It focused on the dignity of the person made in the image of God a 
as being the paramount importance for all the people. Respect for human goodness, peace and justice along the basic rights of every human being that should be recognized throughout the world. Passive in Paris is addressed to all mankind, set out the recognition of human rights and duties as the foundations of world peace. Passim in Terris reminds us that there can be no real peace and harmony if we fail to work for a more just and jointly supportive society. It also reminds us that individuals and families to society and states are called to build peace by promoting and practicing justice with truth and love and contributing to integral human development through solidarity. Thus, it teaches us that we not only have rights, we also have duties towards our fellow men. Just as we have a right to life, we have a corresponding duty to preserve life. Just as we have a right to a dignified life, we have a corresponding duty to promote the welfare of others, what is often called the common good. Passim in Terrace guides us and helps us to know the importance and ways on how to have or achieve peace on earth and contribute to the development not just to ourselves but to the nation as well. Peace is within us, it is in ourselves already, but to achieve peace around the world, we must learn God's teachings and plans for us. We should promote common good in all aspects. We must appreciate what life has to offer and value every second of it. And lastly, we should be responsible as a children of God and as a citizen to our country. My takeaways is that peace requires attention and self-awareness, but it also takes time and effort. For me, the best way to practice peace is to always have an inner peace and tranquility within oneself because that is the start of everything. Also, live simply and positively, build a healthy relationship with others, and help to promote a more just and equal society to everyone. With that, we will live in a world full of hope and happiness in our faces. It is just a simple act but it will truly create a peace on earth.